I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This, this is Console Wars! Done writing your letter to Santa? Yep, just crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Cha cha cha! You're both just wasting your time. Santa? Is that you? Why are you dressed like that? Because I'm not Santa Claus. I'm Annie Claus. Cha cha cha! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you're a woman. Is there an Uncle Claus? Not Auntie like Auntie and Uncle. Auntie like the opposite. Blue robe, cha cha cha! And what is this cha 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 thing you keep saying? I'm the opposite of Santa. So instead of saying ho ho ho, I say the opposite. Cha cha cha! Cha 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 is not the opposite of ho ho ho. Yeah, like if you wanted the opposite, just flip the letters around and say oh oh oh. Well, that's just stupid. Besides, I already got t shirts made. So, what does an anti clause even do? Well, you know how Santa goes into your house and brings you presents? Right, okay, well, I do the opposite. So you go in people's houses and take presents away? No, no, no. What, what I do is I go into other people's houses, and then I fill their boots with soup. Wait, did you just say soup? Yeah, so when they put their boots on, their feet get all soggy. Oh, yeah, yeah I get it, it just makes no sense. Why? Why do you do that? Because I do everything the opposite of Santa. Cha-cha-cha! You know what we need to do? We need to fill him with Christmas spirit. And how do we do that? Well, the same way we do everything. Be really drunk at 3 a.m.? No. Video games! Right. And I know the perfect game. We can play Days Before Christmas. It's not the best game, but it's super Christmassy. We can play it for the Super Nintendo. Why? It's definitely better on the Sega. No, it's not. What? That's it! Are we doing this? Is Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie? Yeah, that one's a little touch and go. Um, there's Christmas trees in the beginning, so yeah. Best Days Before Christmas. Days Before Christmas is an action platformer developed by Funcom and published by Sunsoft. This game is unique in that the Mega Drive version was only released in Australia. The Super Nintendo version was released in Australia and Europe. A US version was in the works, but ultimately cancelled. The game was first released for the Mega Drive, then ported to the Super Nintendo. The games are almost identical, but there are some differences. Which one's better? Let's find out. These games do look identical. Everything looks about the same. The characters, levels, character animations. This applies to the platforming levels and the bonus levels. Some colors may be different, but they're still pretty much the same looking games. With of course one little difference. I'm talking about screen resolution. Once again, the Super Nintendo screen resolution is cropped. Not just the platforming, but the bonus levels too. All the different menus and title cards are cropped as well. Oddly enough, the credits are the only part not cropped. You can keep your screen resolution, because once again, my game has the better use of color. Check out the sky on this stage. Nice pink and purple sunset on the Super Nintendo. On Sega, no pink and purple, just blue. And look at the background on this Super Nintendo stage. See how it changes colors on its own? On Sega, it doesn't change color, only when you move. Or check out this bonus level. Look how bland the Kremlin looks on Sega. Looks much better on Super Nintendo. Let's talk about those bonus levels. Bonus levels take place in different areas of the world. One area is England. Take a look at Sega. There's Big Ben. Looks pretty good. How does it look on Super Nintendo? Oh, they didn't put it in the Super Nintendo game. Okay, well let's look at Japan. On Sega, you can see Mount Fuji. How's that look on Super Nintendo? Oh, they didn't put that in the Super Nintendo game either. Weird. Well, it looks like Super Nintendo should have made a list of those landmarks. Checked it twice. 
The whole making a list and checking it twice thing, that is so lame. I make a list, I check it once. This is my list of ideas. Ready? Mayo chunk shoe ice cream flavor. Oh, that is awful. What am I doing? Ugh. Okay. Uh, well, your game is missing things too. Check out the clouds on this Super Nintendo level. See how they move? And on Sega, eh, no moving clouds. Or check out the moving gears in the background of this Super Nintendo level. And on Sega, no gears at all. Or check out this boss battle. When you hit him on the Super Nintendo, the screen flashes different colors. On Sega, no flash. My game just has so much more. You can't deny my game has more in the graphics department. Even though a couple of landmarks are missing, the Super Nintendo game still has better graphics. Pick any level and side by side, my game will look better. Whether it's the better use of color or more details in the background. Best graphics go to... Super Nintendo. A presentation similar too. We have the same title screens, same menus, same options menu, same openings, same title cards before levels, same advent calendar level overview, same score tallies, same password screens, same endings, and same credits. Right, let's talk about the title cards. Our title cards are the same for the most part, but some of the levels have slightly different names, and some levels swap the pictures. My favorites are Winter Waters, with a polar bear that you never see, and the card for the final boss, Mr. Weather. He looks so terrifying. This could be an epic boss fight. And then you see him and he looks so goofy. I really hope that's his finger. But the Super Nintendo has an exclusive picture. Super Nintendo has this exclusive title card. The Sega just reuses this one. Mine's better. One picture? Big deal. Let's talk about something that really matters. Fonts. Look at the font when you start a new level on Sega. It matches the title card's font. And on Super Nintendo, it doesn't. You just get a generic font when your levels start. Yeah, but your game uses that font too. Look at the score tallies. On Super Nintendo, my font completely matches the title cards. Sega just uses the generic font for its numbers. Okay, so we both use the boring font. Oh, your game also does some other questionable things. Look at the intro on the Super Nintendo. A lot of text on a scroll. Nothing fancy, but it looks fine. Now look at the Sega. The text doesn't even fit on the scroll. That's just lazy. All right, it's not that bad. Oh yeah? Let's go snow. Go snow? Go snow. Oh no. The Super Nintendo game has a lot more snow than Sega. Just check out the title screen. A nice snowy Christmas scene. And look at Sega. No snow, just some clouds moving. It's like a Christmas nightmare. And check out the password on Super Nintendo. Again, it has snow. And Sega, no snow. Also, Sega is so boring. Look at the words it uses. Your password is. Now, look at the Super Nintendo. It says, your magical access code is. So much more charming on the Super Nintendo. I forgot about the snow. Gotta have the white stuff around Christmas. Oh, you guys like the white stuff. Oh, I got plenty of white stuff in my pants. It's potato flakes. It's like soup, put in powdered version. Eh? Eh? Why are there potato flakes in your pants? Well, I can't fit them in my pockets on account of all the macaroni. I do a lot of macaroni art on the go. Well, my game has the edge in presentation. For having an exclusive title card, text that fits the scroll, more charm and much more snow, best presentation goes to... Super Nintendo. You know, for such a mediocre game, the music isn't that bad. Man, it gets stuck in your head. Oh yeah, the uh, the Christmas remixes are super catchy. It definitely sounds better on the Super Nintendo though. The instrumentation really jazzes up the Super Nintendo tunes. Just listen to those sleigh bells on Super Nintendo. They don't 
even ring jing jingling ring ling lingaling two on Sega. The Sega bass makes some of these songs sound really cool. Music still sounds more Christmassy. Yours just doesn't sound right. Yours is supposed to be a lot slower than mine. It sounded fine to me. Did you speed it up or something? No, I'm using the original hardware. See? Game's right in the Genesis. Genesis? Yeah, why? You can't just put a Mega Drive game in the Sega Genesis. You're running at 60 hertz when you should be at 50. Thanks, Internet. Well, why can't I do that? It sounds good. It sounds just like your game. But you're not getting the authentic Mega Drive experience. This is what it's supposed to sound like. Nice and upbeat on Super Nintendo. Painfully slow on the Mega Drive. Every song is slow around the Mega Drive. I have the better instrumentation. Fine. Let's listen to Sega's voiceovers. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have some pretty good voiceovers, too. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Well, I have better sound effects overall. Listen to Ice Schools Falling on Sega. Sounds like something falling. Now listen to Super Nintendo. It sounds like a timpani or something. Now listen to Finding Reindeer on Sega. Sounds pretty satisfying. Now listen to it on Super Nintendo. What is this? Pillsbury Doughboy? And listen to this nice bone crunching sound effect on Sega. Now listen to it on Super Nintendo. It's not even there. A few sound effects aren't going to put your game over the top. I still have some better sounding songs. For having much better instrumentation and being much, much more up-tempo than the Mega Drive, best sound goes to... Super Nintendo! have the same gameplay. Pretty much. You play as Santa in this action platformer. You have two buttons, one to jump and one to attack. Your attack is a snow projectile. It can sometimes be upgraded to a fire attack. You can also jump on enemies, but you need to hit the jump button again or you'll go through the enemy and lose life. Object of the game is simple. Get to the end of the level. This mostly consists of platforming and taking out enemies. There are also four boss fights in the game, not to mention four bonus levels, for a little variety. 24 levels in total. Like I said before, in the bonus levels, you just drop presents and chimneys. These levels are just to get more bonus points. There are also presents that you have to open. They can contain life, checkpoints, enemies, bombs, and random elves that don't do anything. Find a magical potion, look out! You'll turn into Anti Claws. But it's actually a good thing, because you'll be invincible the whole time. But there is one drawback. Throughout the game, you get these presents after killing enemies. These presents are then used in the bonus stages. Anti Claws cannot open or get presents. The games can be played one or two player, like the old Mario games. 
Both games switch back and forth when you die, but the Super Nintendo also switches every time you beat a level. The game also has a password given after each bonus level. Password is almost unnecessary. Yeah, these games are incredibly easy. The game is very generous with health and one-ups. There are lots of checkpoints in each level as well. And there's unlimited continues, so that makes getting through the game in one shot easy. Sure, there are 24 levels, but they are very short. And getting through levels is easy as enemies die in one hit. Since they all die in one hit, getting the fire attack is kind of pointless. At least you get to free these reindeer, I guess. Reindeer lame! You know how I travel? Oh, let me guess. What would you think is the opposite of reindeer? A giant bottle of ketchup. That, that don't make any sense. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I travel around in a giant bottle of mustard. Well, this game isn't perfect. Not at all. Let's talk about the points system. The game has a weird obsession with points. Take a look at the mini games. This is played to give you more points. Do the points give you more lives or continues? Nope. Points are just to get you a higher place on the scoreboard. So, not being able to get presents as anti claws doesn't really matter because all you're giving up is points. Just be the invincible guy. Unlimited continues, passwords, invincibility. This game is really easy. But it can still get really frustrating. The thing that'll kill you most in this game is falling. There's so much platforming, and the way the camera moves as you jump does obstruct your vision. But, like we said, unlimited continues, so it's not the worst thing. It might be frustrating, but it's more boring than anything. Lack of challenge can make it a chore to get through some of these levels, especially the levels with moving platforms that force you to wait for the perfect time to jump. There are a lot of these levels. Also, a lot of these levels are pretty much repeated. They reuse the same level designs a lot, and they just change the layout a little bit. It gets really repetitive. Did we need 24 levels? Definitely not. That's the game. Lots of similarities. But mine is better. Let's talk about that screen resolution again. Since the game is so platform heavy, having a wider screen resolution really helps. These jumps are harder to see in Super Nintendo. You won't die as often in Sega. But you'll still die in Sega. Like we said, the camera moves with you. You won't always see the platform as you jump. You'll be taking leaps of faith in both games. Well, it still makes my game a little easier. Oh, you like things a little easier. Let's talk about the passwords. Sega's password is seven characters long. Super Nintendo's password, I mean, magical access code, is only five. You like easy? How you like them easy? Like you'll even use that password. Besides, my game has better defaults. In the options menu, you can adjust how long you want to be anti-claws. It can be 10, 20, or even 30 seconds. The default on Sega, 20. The default on Super Nintendo is 10. If you skip the options menu completely, you'll have less invincibility on Super Nintendo. Who cares about the default? I know you're pushing the time to 30 seconds just like me. You know what's really bad? Your difficulty setting. The difficulty levels on Super Nintendo make sense. Easy starts you off with 4 lives and 5 health. Normal, 3 lives and 4 health. Hard, 2 lives and 3 health. Do you see the pattern here? Sega's much more random. Easy, you start with 5 lives and 5 health. Medium, 4 lives and 5 health. Hard, 3 lives and 2 health. 2? How did it go from 5 to 2? Where's the logic here? Logic? Who cares about that? Let's talk about something that's completely missing in your game. The Sega game has this rock monster that can only be defeated by anti claws. He's in quite a few levels, and he is completely missing from the Super Nintendo game. But it's such a pointless enemy! The rock monster can't hurt you. He only pushes you when you're Santa. This takes away no life. You can't get around him, he just pushes you. He does throw bricks at you when you're anti claws, but this is completely pointless since you're invincible as anti claws. So, all he does is block your way for a few seconds as you kill him. He's pretty much a glorified wall. I'm glad that he's not on the Super Nintendo, so I don't have to waste my time. So, my gameplay's still better. It's easier to do the platforming. So it already made an easy game easier. Are you kidding me? The shorter password's where it's at. You're never even gonna use that password. So, does that mean gameplay's a tie? The Super Nintendo game has a shorter password and difficulty settings that make sense. 
The Sega game makes platforming a little bit easier with screen resolution, and has an exclusive, albeit pointless enemy, and a better default anti clause time. These games still feel like the same easy and mediocre experience. Best gameplay is a tie. Both games are not great, but one's better. And the best days before Christmas goes to... Super Nintendo! It has better graphics, with more colors and details in the background. It has better presentation with an exclusive title card, more charm, and more snow. It has more upbeat songs than the Mega Drive version, and better instrumentation too. And it has the same uninspired gameplay as the Sega game. These are not great games. In the end, the Super Nintendo game does look and sound better. The Sega game might be a little easier with the screen resolution, but it's still really easy on the Super Nintendo. So, why not go for the better looking and sounding game? Best days before Christmas goes to... Super Nintendo! So, did we get you in the Christmas spirit? No! All you did was play a dumb video game, cha-cha-cha! I'll never get in the Christmas spirit, unless you can convince me right now. Well, how do we say this? I mean, it's the happiest season of all, with those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings. Yeah, when friends come to call, it's the happiest season of all. There'll be parties for hosting and marshmallows for roasting. And caroling, out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories. Of Christmases long, long ago. It's just, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, wait a minute. I think, uh, <laughs> I think I'm starting to feel something. Yeah, I think you did it. I think I got the Christmas spirit. Oh, I Dip! We did it! Good call, quoting a Christmas song. Huh? That was a song? I was just making that up. I feel good. I think I'm gonna do something Santa would do. I'm gonna eat some cookies. Well, that's the spirit, Annie Claus. Eat as much as you want. Oh, man. Cookies are good. I can't believe I never had one of these before. Yeah! 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 Are you okay? I think he's choking. I'll be fine. I think he really needs help. I'm fine. Go Christmas! Don't keep eating the cookies! Here, at least drink something. I'm fine. I can't believe he's dead. I know. The doctor said he was going to be fine. Maybe we shouldn't have brought him to the vet. Well, this is putting a bummer on my holiday. You want to go out for a beer? Uh, sure. Let me just put my boots on. Hey. Wait a minute. Minestrone. New England clam chowder? Hey, friggin' hey, happy holidays. Oh, friggin' oh, have a beer. Cha cha cha! Happy friggin' holidays! Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, Saturnalia, happy Hanukkah. You can celebrate what you wanna. Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to Chuck Obscure for his donation of both games. And thanks to everyone who suggested this game. And keep those other suggestions coming, we will get to them. Also, check us out on Patreon for earlier access to videos and other bonus content. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more console wars goodness. Later. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> oh, just, you know, getting all the macaronis out of my pockets. <laughs> all of my bathrobe. <laughs>